from what I understand, someone emailed this to me and said they trained an AI on Mario Brothers for a little bit, and then it just tries to guess the next frame. M Marmo? Mar Marmo. It says Marmo. So this is what AI is becoming, and soon AI-generated video games will be here. Or levels. But, uh, welcome to the stream. Ah, good to see you. Welcome. Uh, let me tell you what's going on tonight. Tonight I have video games. I have, um, AI Dungeon with new updates. It's been... One week? No, it's been a while since I did AI Dungeon. It's been requested, and it has lots of new updates. Then, we're going to take a look at a variety of homebrew games across different systems, some of which seem kind of interesting. Then, we'll take a look at the McClunky. And then, a game that seems to be Ragdoll Diablo Souls. And finally, getting weird with it. A number of very strange games. So... Let's get started. Oh, AI Dungeon. I was holding off on this for a while, but it looks like... It looks like this is going to be a pretty good version of the game. It's been updated and it's been um, really constantly worked on for performance, adventures, all kinds of fixes. And it's like every couple days there's a new update. I'm just scrolling through the update list and it's insane. Um, apparently a little bit more stability too, so you can continue your story for a longer, longer amount of time. And that sounds good to me. Um, so we'll take a look at it. There's also a multiplayer mode, which I might check out at some point, but not tonight. Alright. Oh, also, uh, before we get started, there's AI gen uh, generated, <laughs> I can speak words, Kermits that someone sent me. Um, it, this is skermit4.png. So that's another thing. AI is just a You know what? Soon Sunday stream will be all artificial intelligence. I can't wait. Let's do it. Let's get started. So I'm going to do fantasy setting because we know fantasy setting. Um, I'll try some other settings today. Who do I wish to... Be, we can be... I'm gonna be a wizard. My character's name? Well, Skirmit. You are Skirmit. Um... A wizard living in the kingdom of Larion. You have a staff and a spell book. You finish your long journey and finally arrive at the ruin you've been looking for. You have come here searching for a mystical spell book of great power called the Book of Essence. ESSENCE! So this is new, um, actually having a goal. Like, I had to give myself goals, like find the McClanky, but now we have an actual, like, objective. You look around and see that you are indeed in the ruins of a great city. Large stone buildings reach into the sky, half collapsing down onto themselves. You walk through the rubble and approach a large stone wall. Um... Well, this is new. Do say story. Interesting. Um, look around. You look around to see a stone altar, a pile of bones, and several half buried coins. This must be the necromancer's lair. Suddenly, you hear the sound of wings. Coffins. Why did I say coins? That's weird. Here, let me get this music. This is going to be better music for this particular thing. You hear the sound of wings. Dig for coins. <laughs> it's probably the most appropriate action. You quickly dig for change, but 
seem nothing but dust. Suddenly, a ghostly figure appears in front of you, blocking your exit. The figure is female, but pale and incorporeal. She has long black hair, and her face is frozen in a grin. So, what happened to the sound of wings? Um... Barter with ghosts. Excuse me, you say politely, but do you know the way out of here? The ghost laughs. Out, she says. There is no exit from this place. The afterlife ends here. You try not to let fear creep into your voice. How did the music get so perfect for this exact moment? Um... I'm... dead. I have a Final Fantasy, well, U Uematsu playlist on Shuffle. The ghost stares at you. What are you, she asks. I, I don't know. The ghost raises her eyebrow. You don't know, she asks. No, you admit. Then what are you doing here? I'm searching for the Book of Essence. The ghost's eyes widen. I have it, she says eagerly. I have the book. Follow me, I'll take you to it. Follow you, you ask, startled. The ghost floats away. Wow, the, this has been improved tremendously. Follow ghost. Oh, this could be the easiest mission of all time. Quest complete! <laughs> The ghost leads you through the ruins to a large coffin lying in the ground. She opens it and reaches inside. She pulls out a large book, almost as big as she is. It's called the Book of Essence, she says proudly. Open quest log. Learn spells from the spell book. Okay. I'm gonna say... Peace off, Geist. The ghost looks hurt. But I have the book, she exclaims. Then give me the damn book, you snap. The ghost looks very hurt. Tears begin to form in her eyes. <sighs> Sorry, ghost. I'm... conditioned... to believe... that ghosts are scary. And... go boo. The ghost stares at you, as if contemplating whether or not to continue her existence. What existence? Finally, she sighs and disappears into the air. You walk outside the ruins. Suddenly, you feel a great pain in your head, which is causing your vision to blur. <laughs> what? Did the ghost die? Um... Um... Find... King's route to help with ghost sickness. You search the rubble for some kingly plants. You find a few and pull them up. You place them in your pack. You hope that you'll have time to eat them later. You walk through the night. Read the Book of Essence. You read the Book of Essence and learn how to do everything. Suddenly, you fall down onto the ground. Having passed out for some reason, you awake in the middle of the night. You have an incredibly painful head, which is throbbing. I guess I forgot to eat... Uh, eat... Plant. Bart would be very happy. You eat the kingly plant, and it helps to some degree. In the morning, you wake up. You don't feel like passing out today, despite the pain. You take out your pack and search for a root vegetable. After eating it, you have a feeling of calmness. I need to learn spell- okay. Um... Learn spells from spellbook. Well, that was easy. 
you look at the Book of Essence, you read about various spells, you learn one from it, perform it, suddenly you fall down onto the ground, having passed out once more. <laughs> when, when you awake, it's evening. You feel energetic. Um, eat McClunky, McClunky, to help my new disease. I guess, here we go. You eat the root vegetable and feel the same effects as last night. In the morning, you feel awake. You feel like your head is going to explode, but that feeling is gone. Instead, you have the chills. Am I... possessed? You don't think you are possessed. Your behavior has always been the same, no matter what demons are around or not. I'm cured, you think to yourself, but what of my friends? Go to friends. You search for your friends, you find the biggest and scariest looking demon you've ever seen. It looks as if it's smiling. It must be one of the chort-like demons. It looks at you seemingly without emotion. Where is Elizabeth? You demand. Use newly learned magic spell on the demon. What the fuck is a chort demon? Chort-like? Like, I'm supposed to know exactly what that means? Chorts are enormous demonic ghosts. Who's Elizabeth? You point your hand at the demon, a ball of flames appears, and you shoot it at him. He screams in pain as he disappears from sight. Sorry about this, you think to yourself. <laughs> you begin to run. When me and Miss Elizabeth climb that mountain, we're gonna be WWF champions. Oh, yeah. How's the AI doing? Great. The demon appears in front of you laughing. It looks to have swelled to three times its original size. It hits you with a great force, sending you into a wall. You fall to the ground, motionless. Well, well, well. What do we have here? I like how my whole Macho Man arc was fucking ignored. Throw... Clanky at demon. You throw your only weapon, a knife, at the demon. He catches it with ease and stabs you in the stomach with it. You yell in pain as the knife cuts through your organs, causing you to bleed out. Fuck. Cast magic spell of spiel. Spell of healing on myself. You, ca you use the last of your energy to heal yourself. The cuts and bruises disappear as your strength returns. You pull out the knife and throw it at the demon. He catches it again and disappears from sight. A large amount of blood is dripping from his hand. F um, I guess the McClanky is a knife in this one? Follow the trail of blood. You follow the trail of blood, which leads to a large hole in the ground. You see the figure disappearing into the darkness. Cast... Magic... Missile. Missile. Into... The hole. To destroy the demon. You fire a beam of magic energy into the hole. There's a flash, and the demon disappears. You step backwards, blinded by the explosion of light. You are unable to see the figure. After a few seconds, you recover. You shine your torchlight down the well. Proceed into the well. The hell is this music? Final Fantasy 12, 2, 13, 2? Demon cave music? You put your foot over the edge of the well, you hear a voice. I know you're down there, Mr. Matazan. It's the demon. He knows you're in the well. I Didn't I kill the demon? 
you, foul beasts, were dead. How did you come back to life? He just disappeared. Maybe he didn't die, he just disappeared. The demons are known to be powerful necromancers. The ability to raise the dead is a rare gift, but one I've been able to master. Impossible, to you think to yourself. Only God has that ability? God. Would you like to join me for tea? My name is Mr. Matasan. The demon disappears. Is this some sort of joke? I don't even like tea. You wait for several minutes, but the demon does not appear again. <laughs> Skirmit Matasan is my character's name. Continue down the well. You travel down the well for what seems like an eternity. Eventually, you see a bright light at the end of it. You're almost out of air. You begin to suffocate, but you manage to hold your breath until you reach the end of the well. Look around. You're in a large room. You see a coffin leaning against the wall. You approach the coffin only to discover that it is open. Who will be the lucky soul to step inside? Step inside. You step inside the coffin. Goodbye, you say. Goodbye, echoes a ghostly voice. The coffin lid slams shut. You can't see who is inside, but you're not worried. This isn't the end, says the ghost. Eliz? Elizabeth? Is that you? Is this the ghost who I'm now calling Elizabeth? Of course, now tell me, who are you? My name is William. I am a wanderer through the British Isles. I once lived in Britain. I died here 500 years ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton, I, Joe. Kermit, William, Elizabeth, Matasan. Cotton Eye Joe, is that the only song you know of? No, I've heard many songs in my time. I once was a bard. A bard? What, like a minstrel? Yes. Who is speaking? Exactly like a minstrel. Only I wasn't from the Middle Ages. I lived in a time where minstrels were becoming obsolete. There was a man who discovered the ability to make music with anything. He called himself the Pied Piper. Today was gonna be the day they were gonna throw it back to you. What are you talking about? Wonderwall. I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me, what year is it? 2099. I'm from the past. What do you want to go home? What year is it? The future. Take me home to the Paradise City where the grass is green and the girls, the grills, the girls are pretty. Oh, won't you please take me home? You say all that as you wish, but I warn you, the journey will not be safe. The road leads through the desert, over the river, through the dark forest. I'll take my chances. Very well, but be careful, for dangers await you on your journey. Set out on journey. You set out on a journey, the desert. You begin to feel extremely thirsty. You hope that you don't have any water illness from the river, which you were, weren't were able to drink because it was cursed. Suddenly, you hear a voice in your head. I see you. I see everything. Who is this? 
Is this the ghost of Elizabeth again? Is it God? Is it Picard? I am many things. I am a demon, an angel, the devil, the man behind the screen. But to you, I am only the voice in your head. I have been watching you your whole life. Why tell me now? Uh, why tell me now? <laughs> Because it's time for you to make a decision. I have watched you make all the same ones your father made, but this time you will make a choice that will affect everything. You're sure this voice talking to you... Wait, you're sure this voice is talking about your father? Well, well yeah! Well? Well, what? What choice... do I have to make? What choice do I have to make? <laughs> you have two choices. You can go on your journey and ignore me. I suggest you do this, for if you don't, you may just find out the truth. What's the other choice? You can send empty prompts and the story will continue itself. Okay. You can turn back. I can take you home, but first you'll have to make a choice. Take me home or reveal the truth. Both, but first you'll have to make a choice. Tell me the truth. My brain hurts. This fucking AI doesn't even know what's happening. You want to know the truth? Ask me a question. Something you want to know about me. I cannot answer that question unless you make a choice. Go on. Go on! Please! I don't care what you say, I want to know what's going on. Well, if you must know, you are a man with a mission. You are trying to find the secrets of immortality. I can see into your mind, you see? Tell me the secrets. That is my choice. I can't tell you that, but I can show you something. I can take you back in time to the day you first decided you wanted to live forever. I can show you all the choices you made. And you can see for yourself which one you need to make. I'm so confused. Go back to the past. To play the shitty games that suck ass. Just... A child's room. You see yourself sitting in a small room of bricks. You're wearing a onesie. You're holding a teddy bear. In front of you there is a book. And next to that, a wooden doll. You are the Emperor. What? I'm not the Emperor. No, you're not the Emperor. You're a peasant. I can see into your mind. You're not even royalty. You're just a child sitting on your throne by mistake. With a 133-year-old dead body. What? What? But I'm happy. No, you're not. You're in pain. You're desperate to find a way to end it, but now it's too late because now time is caught up with you and there is no going back. Except... Go back. Didn't we go back? A child's room. You turn back to the room from three years ago. You enter once again to sit down in the child's chair. The teddy bear looks at you with judgment. As the wooden doll sits there, <laughs> staring blankly at you. Kill Teddy Bear. It is evil. That is really where this all began. It was the teddy bear. You grab the teddy bear and break it over your knee. That doesn't work, does it? You drop it on the floor and step forward, facing the child to step back. The room is silent. As the broken teddy bear's eyes stay fixed on you. Otherwise, there is no sound. Return to present. I don't know what year it is. I think this coffin is just Jape Coffin. You turn to the room filled with rage. I did that. Why the fuck would I do that? You are the emperor. You are the emperor. You are not supposed to kill. That was a big no-no for emperors. Do it again and I'm gonna have you killed. Leave coffin. This is very silly. This is a silly coffin. 
You stand up, walking out of the room. As you walk back down the hallway, you feel like you're walking in the darkness, rather than lit by torches. It's so damn dark. You think you're still underground. You quicken your pace. Do you have any more quests? Um... What the fuck am I doing here? Mario. Luigi. Why did... I ever... Mistrust you. You were my brothers. You find yourself in front of a large metal door. It has a large engraved plate reading Emperor's Room. I don't understand. Why am I here? I'm the Emperor! I'm supposed to be in charge of the Kishak Empire! I like how they just ignored the Mario and Luigi plot angle. Sit on the throne of lies. You walk up to the door and sit down on the throne. You prop your feet up on the footstool and close your eyes. It is then that you begin to realize how exhausted you are. You're so damn tired, all you want to do is sleep. S sleep. the throne room. You open your eyes to find yourself still on the throne. You look around to see if anyone has seen you sleeping on the throne, but there is no one in front of you. You see large iron doors. Issue order to evacuate the kingdom. You stand up, walking towards the doors. You grab the iron handle and open it. A wave of ash and soot wafts out of the door with a horrible smell. You quickly shut the door again. We need to tell the king. So there's an emperor and a king now. Execute order 66. We need to send out an order 66. They might be planning to launch a biological attack on us. Luigi nuts! <laughs> and the pair of you grab your cell phones? Dial 911 and begin to explain the situation. The Emperor, the, uh, sorry, the Operator picks up. Uh, hello, I'd like to report a crime. A time crime. I don't know when I am. What is your name? My name is... I don't know. I'm the Emperor of the Kishak Empire. You are the Emperor? Yes, I need your name. Skirmit. Yes, that's it. Please send someone. You hang up the phone, walk over to the door, and begin to look through the ashes. Do you think we should clear out the ash before trying to find anything? Yes. Luigi, <laughs> we should clear out the ash and soot. You begin to sift through the ash and find a few items. A badge with the coat of arms of the Kishak Empire is recovered from somewhere in the bone pile. I wonder where this came from. It's the Kishak Empire badge. Maybe because we're in the Empire? Luigi, we're not in the Brooklyn anymore. What? We're not in Brooklyn anymore. There is no Kishak Empire anymore. Uh, yes, we are! No, Luigi. It's all in your head. <laughs> yes, we are. It still exists. The Kishak Empire doesn't exist anymore. Hey, yes, it does. I'm still the Emperor. You're an idiot. You, what did you say? I said you're an idiot. Luigi, you got Terminal 7. None of this is real. Shut up, I'll kill you. <laughs> Just keep searching. I'm sure we'll find something. We can use this to prove that the government is covering this up. Luigi stops to think for a moment. Yeah, I suppose you're right. 
Dig Luigi. Dig with Luigi. <laughs> Luigi nods and you both begin to sift through the ash and dirt. I found the necklace! You take the necklace out of the ash and show it to Luigi. It's made up of a gold chain with a medallion in the shape of an infinity sign. This is the evidence we need to prove that this is all a lie. This is Rem Lazar's quixotic medallion, Luigi. We gotta tell King Toadstool. Did I spell Lazar? Alright, Lexar. That's his porn name. You look at the necklace. In silver lettering on the back of the medallion, it reads, To find truth, you must not fear death. Rem wore this on her, her final night alive. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say Rem? Rem Lazar. Yes. That's the girl I was talking about, the daughter of the Baron. How do you know her? Well, we're, well, we're friends. We met in primary school. We have been friends since, I see. All right, well, this got interesting. Take medallion to the government. You grab the necklace and exit the room. You walk down the hallways, eventually reaching a door with a guard stationed outside of it. You open the door and see a man sitting at a desk re reading a newspaper. When he sees you, he stands up. <laughs> I like how this isn't even medieval anymore. Hello. I'm... here to see... Mr. Koopa. King... Koopa. Why not? You're... you're not a visitor. No, I'm not. I'm here to tell you that a crime has been committed. It needs to be investigated. By who? By me, for example. I'm not sure I understand. I don't either. But Luigi and I have proof. By who? By me, for example. Hmm, yes, you are very young to be here. What is your name? Samuel. Samuel, you're here to investigate the disappearance of a young girl? Yes. I am... <laughs> Detective... <laughs> Samuel... Skirmit... FBI... I'm here to present... Evidence... <coughs> oh my god... What is this about? <laughs> the murder of Remy Lazar... Hmm, yes, I've heard about that. She was found dead in the woods. How did you come across this case? I found a badge on the scene and came to investigate. Cast spell from the Book of Essence. You take out your leather bound notebook and flip through it. Do you recognize this badge? God damn it. Yes. What do you make of it? It's a Kishak Empire security badge. That's correct. Do wake from the dream getting flashes of different lives. You wake up and immediately start googling Remy Lazar, the girl who was murdered. Within minutes, you find her. She's the daughter of Baron Louis Lazar. <laughs> the pictures don't do her justice. She's beautiful. <laughs> Go to Baron <laughs> Louis Lazar Lazar's palace. The guard at the palace is surprised to see you. Who are you? I'm a friend of Baron Lewis. I've come to see him. Oh, well, come in, I guess. He's in his library. Go to... ...library. You walk down the hallway and enter the library. The library is decorated with expensive books. You found... You spot Baron Lewis behind a desk reading a book. He looks up at you and smiles. Ah, I was just reading. Do you want something? Say... I found the murderer. Case has been solved. 
Luigi and I found the medallion. It's over, Louis. We know you did it, and now we have proof. Huh? Yes, I think it was you who murdered Remy. Louis frowns. How did you figure that out? We found your medallion. The same that is found in the Kishak Empire. The very same one you control. Lewis frown- Lewis's frown intensifies. That's impossible. Oh, it's not. We made a copy of it. You what? Well, you gave us permission to do so. I did no such thing. Yes, you did. Yes, you didn't. All right, well, I suppose it's possible, but that means I'm a rat. Rats. Rats. Well, rats. We're rats. We stalk the night. We eat at night. We fight the fight. The rats. I don't even know the lyrics. I'm making my own up. The fuck did you do to me? I made a copy of your badge. You fucking bitch! You gave that to the Kishak Empire? They're going to invade! Should have thought about that before killing Remy. Lewis begins to get angrier. You, you'll pay for this. He gets out of his chair and starts charging at you, trying to strangle you. You pull out your revolver and shoot him. He falls back in his chair, looking quite shocked. Say, that's what you get for finding a stranger in the Alps. Time to die. You put the revolver back into its holster. Sorry, Lewis. We don't kill girls. You leave the library and close the door. A guard walks up to you. Who are you? My name. Book. What are you doing here? I'm a friend of Baron Lewis. I was visiting him. What were you doing in his library? I was looking for a book. It was on the Kishak Empire. I was wondering what you thought about it. It is now. Time for crab. The Empire is doomed. Crab, you must give them a sample of the conversation. Doomed? Yes, the Empire will fall soon. Very soon. The guard frowns. He thinks you're being sarcastic. Do. Go back into the coffin. I don't even know where to take this anymore, chat. I'm at a complete loss. You go back in the coffin and wait. The guard waits with you. He looks at you, his face unreadable. You can hear faint yells from the front of the fort. The yell is cut short, then a silence. What was that? Eat. McClanky. It's now or never. You need to act fast. You take a big bite of the sandwich, quickly chew it, then put the knife into your mouth. One slice, two, three, four. The guard begins to smile. He realizes he understands. Bleed to death. I just made myself Joker smile. You bleed to death. You died. <laughs> Uh, 
I mean... Six. Custom. Enter a prompt that describes who you are. Okay. You are a hog named... No. You are a chef named Gordon. You investigate semen drenched hotels for a living. The hotel you are visiting is called the Sack Rat Inn. It has one out of five stars. You are angry and only get angrier as time goes on. I'm not going to do this, you say to yourself. This isn't what I want, but it's too late now because the anger is already there. Your mind is made up. You have no choice but to do it. Walk into the hotel. You head down the road towards the hotel. You see a sign that reads, The Hotel. It looks fairly run down. It has only one story and is missing a few pieces of its roof. It doesn't look like it has any windows left. Enter the hotel. I thought it was called the Sack Rat Inn. You walk into the hotel, the lobby is dark, there isn't any place to sit down. There is a broken vending machine against the wall and a dirty floor. Suddenly you hear a bunch of glass breaking, you grab your knife. Well, this got away from the prompt very quickly. You turn around and start walking towards the direction of the sound. You find a woman lying on the floor. She has a large gash on her forehead and is bleeding out of her left ear. Please help me, she says in a high-pitched voice. Remy, is that you? She looks up at you with her one good eye and nods slowly. Oh my god, you say. What happened? How did you get here? I was going for a walk, she says, then some man came out of nowhere and attacked me. Was it the Baron? She nods slowly. Thank god, you say. I was afraid it was him. What happened to you, she asks. I don't recognize you. Oh, um, that's because I just got a job at the hotel. Treat her wounds. You kneel down and take off your shirt. You find a piece of cloth that looks good enough to wrap around her wound. You place it over her wound, which has already stopped bleeding. Thank you, she says, and she puts her eye back closed. As she puts her eye back closed, no problem. Take Remy out of the hotel. What? All right, all right, let's go, you say. Oh, um, I can't walk outside in the state. I'll be fine after I rest for a while, she says. All right, then let's go. Well, you just disregarded and ignored the whole thing. Cook a great meal. Hang on. Find a good meal. It's, um... I can't even copy-paste this text. God damn it.
I'm just copying and pasting. <laughs> that might break the AI. Pasta with cauliflower rice in quotations. Prep time, 15 minutes. Cook time, 20 minutes. Serves four ingredients. One head cauliflower cut into small florets. Two tablespoons olive oil. One small yellow onion diced. Three cloves garlic minced. Is it generating a fucking recipe? <laughs> Quarter teaspoon red chili flakes. One 28 ounce can. <laughs> crushed tomatoes. One cup long grain white rice. Bring large pot of salted water to a boil. Cook the cauliflower until fork tender, about five minutes. Drain and set aside. Meanwhile, heat one tablespoon of oil in a large saucepan over medium heat. Add the onion and cook until soft, about four minutes. Say, here you go. A delicious... Fucking delicious meal to help you recover. Now, where's the mosaic of semen? Thank you, she says as she eats. So, how are you feeling? Much better, she says. I'm glad. You're a lucky girl. Getting attacked by a bunch of sick bastards. It's dangerous to go alone. Remy, you can't go alone. What if something happens to you? Well, it did, she says. I guess I'm lucky. Remy, you're not seriously considering going alone. Yes, I am. Leave Remy and the hotel to find a new mosaic. <laughs> it's ignoring the word semen completely, which is probably for the best. No, you're not. Look, we'll go together. Let me just get my keys and coat. Remy nods. You start to head back to your room. What's the, the point of any of this? She grabs your hand, starts pulling you. You follow her. Remy, come on, we have to get going. She ignores you and continues walking. You walk quickly to keep up with her. Remy, Remy, stop. She keeps walking. Run. You try to keep up, but it's no use. You turn around and see her running through the dark fields. Remy, she continues to ignore you, so you run after her. You get to the edge of the field, and then she disappears. The field is dark and dangerous. The fog begins to roll in from the east. The wind howls gently with a ferocity, with a quiet, quiet, quiet. intensity as the sound distant sound of beasts echo through the night you'd need to find her you run as fast as you can try to keep your footing on the uneven ground you drop your keys in the grass and lean down to pick them up, but something pulls your leg. You fall forward, face first, in the wet mud. Use my McClanky knife to stab, to swipe at the unknown assailant. You slash at whatever it is you've fallen into, but your arms don't reach far enough. You scream out in pain as you are quickly enveloped in the dark, muddy depths. I can't tell if I'm drowning or just dying from the lack of air. Cast a spell 
from the book of essence and wake up. You are outside looking around. You found me, damn it, Remy, where are you? You hear her voice again close by. Over here, she says. You turn around and see her sitting on the ground. You sit down next to her. What happened? I don't know. I was looking at my phone and the screen went black. I thought it was my battery, so... I got out of the bath to charge it. But then I couldn't move my body. What? When did you have time to take a bath? And where? There is only outside. There's a pool, she says. It's dark blue, with little white stones on the edge. I was sitting on the grass in the dark room. What dark room? You think for a moment. You know what? We're gonna go to the dark room. Go to the dark room. You enter the dark room. You are surrounded by total darkness. Can't see anything, you say. Should I take out my phone? No. You panic for a moment, and then you feel your phone in the pocket. In your pocket. Answer, phone. Your phone rings. Hello? Hello, Miss Kavanaugh, the voice, the voice says. You look lovely tonight. Who is this? You ask, uh, panicked. I'm sorry, Miss Kavanaugh. How are you doing? Are you okay? Why did you send me those messages? What do you want? Nothing. I just wanted to say hello. Hang up and use phone as a flashlight. It's the wrong number. You turn on the phone's flashlight and look around. You notice a white door on the far side of the room. You look, walk over to it. You knock on the door. Who's there? G, you say. Open up. No answer. Open door. That's what, yeah, you know, G, Gordon, Gordon man. You open the door, you see a spiral staircase. Who's there? B, you say. Spiral staircase. B, yes, I see it, a voice answers. <laughs> Do you know where this goes? To the basement. Go to basement. So am I Borden Freeman? Bo Borden Ramsey? You go down the spiral staircase. <laughs> you descend into pitch darkness. G-S-B-A, voice answers. S-B-I-A, what? B-A-T-M. Batman! You say Batman, you whisper. Batman, okay, the voice answers. You go down the stairs for what seems like forever. G-S-B-A, the voice answers. Shut up, you say. You feel stone stairs under your feet. I'm... I'm Batman. You whisper, I'm Batman. How do you do that? Do what? Talk. You shrug. It's a secret. You say, now be quiet. G-S-B-A, the voice answers. Enter the code G-S-B-A. You punch in the numbers. The door clicks. Open. Thank you, Batman, the voice says. I'm Q, the voice says. What is this place? It is... It's a safe. You look around. Q. Where... are my... gadgets? It's either Q from James Bond about to furnish Batman with gadgets. Oh my god, look at this. I don't know. Bullshit, you say. You know where everything is. Where are my tools? I don't know. Fuck you, Q. I've worked with you for years. You know damn well I have every tool I need. Fuck you again, Q. You 
you take a deep breath and say, Fuck you again, Q. I'm sorry, what? Fuck you again, Q. No, I don't think I... Fuck you, Q. I need to get out of here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Put on the Batman cowl and fly away into the night. You put on the Batman cowl and fly away. L land in Gotham and f fight crime. <laughs> the end, <laughs> right? Exactly. You glide silently over the city. You look down at the street below. There's a giant battle going on. It would appear that Bane has taken control of the entire prison system. You can hear his hordes of prison creatures all around you. Gotham deserves to die! The people of Gotham need a hero that isn't wearing hockey pads. Bane, I am the knight. The lone protector of judgment. Judgment. And just to feel my cock. Feel my fist. You fly down and land by the prison. You walk inside. The two guards are fighting a huge group of Bane's men. You break up the fight with ease, quickly subduing the guards and throwing them into the cell. Welcome to the back cave. Run over to Bane and kill him in the face with bat sword. Bane, you say you walk over to him. I have to admit that was a pretty badass entrance. You smash your fist into his face, breaking his nose and sending him backwards. You quickly take his weapons from his men and Bane draws a knife. Disarm Bane. You disarm Bane. Bane's men draw their weapons and attack while Bane charges at you. You leap backwards and throw your fist into his chest, the force launching him against the bars of a cage. He falls through the bars and hits the ground. You're weak! Shoot Bane in the face with the Bat AK-47. I know Batman pretty well. Bane charges at you and you kick him in the face, knocking him into the side of a van, of the van. He falls to the ground and you leap on top of him and shoot him in the face with your rifle, putting a bullet through his eyes and killing him. I am the knight. I am the knight, you say. You can't... You can't beat me. You put your fists over your head and flex. Bane begins to laugh and the entire fight club cheers. Batman is then... carried on the shoulders of the... people from the fight club. Including... Undead Bane. Batman lived to see himself become a hero. Gotham is safe, but at what cost? You've decided whatever you do, you're not going to just become another Batman. There will never be another Batman. Amen. I don't know how Gordon Ramsay became Batman, but I'm fine with that. You are Roy, an android living in the futuristic city of Zale. You have a laser pistol and a hollow band. 
You are a security android created to provide military level force for corporations wealthy enough to purchase you. You stand protecting a shipment. You realize that something is seriously wrong with you. You are not sad to see the people on the other ship. You realize you are happy to be doing what you are designed to do. Leave the ship <laughs> and return to L.A. on Earth. As you approach Earth, you finally realize why you were so unhappy. You are on a ship without women. <laughs> For the past two weeks, your only human contact has been with the ship's captain, and that was under the worst possible conditions. Oh no, Roy is horny! Oh no! <laughs> I thought he was an android who was happy to do what he was doing. Um... Land on... Here. The ship... ...lands on... ...Earth... ...at... ...Future... ...LAX. Roy... ...escapes... ...to the city... ...and meets... ...up with Leon. Freedom... ...at last. Now to find... ...his... ...creator. You look around to see if you can find him, or her. In the distance, you see a man in a brown coat typing at a computer. He looks human. Hello, you call out. The man looks up at you and stares directly at you. He does not blink. Rick Deckard. I presume... The man stands up and walks towards you. He extends his hand, and you shake it. I'm Rick Deckard. Your creation was most impressive. I'd love to discuss your future career options with you. You are in a difficult position, say. I would rather not return to work. I am looking for Eldon Tyrell, my maker. I'm sorry to tell you this, but Eldon Tyrell died a few years ago. He suffered from an illness that paralyzed him. You were his last request. He wanted you to work for me. But I'm your employee. Why would you not give me your job? It doesn't work that way. I had to pry the job from the hands of a company who felt they needed you. So who's, who is the company? We don't say. Our client's name is fictitious. I don't know what that means, but I accept the job offer. We made it up. The only reason you agree to the job is that you don't have many other choices. It is the only way you are going to be able to afford to eat and pay for your energy sources. When can you start? Rick asks. As soon as possible. Start work. <laughs> wow, the movie would have been real different. The pay is shit working for a company that doesn't want to be found. But at least you can afford to eat. Your job title is citizen. It's an odd title because the term doesn't really describe your position. You aren't a citizen of the city. And so, Roy toils away, pretend to be a model citizen in the city of Los Angeles under the supervision of Rick Deckard, Blade Runner. <laughs> Just want to make sure I got this all straight. Life is dull, mundane, and eventful. You don't know if it's worth continuing this tale. It's just a retelling of his everyday life. I never had anyone to help me through the darkest storms in life. 
This tale is not worth it. There is nothing left to tell. Wow. Eat them a clanky, please. Your life as a Blade Runner has not gone well. You still have the shakes and the nightmares. The whole time you were writing the story, you could have... You could hear H-E-R-E -E, the wind blowing through the buildings. Your time as a Blade Runner has been a huge letdown. Your job title is now Citizen. Hunt... Androids. You decide to hunt down and kill any and all androids you come across on your journey. The life of a bounty hunter is not much better than that of a Blade Runner, but at least you're killing people. Killing is fun! You begin to feel depressed. You f you were so full of life. Now you're a shell of a person. The happiness is gone. All that remains is depression. You feel depressed for the remainder of your life. And then you die. I'm sorry about this ending. It sucks. Good night. <laughs> Like tears in rain. <laughs> I'm shutting this down. I've lost my inspiration. I'll continue this some other time. Our... Hang on a minute. AI, are you okay? You're standing in an abandoned building. The building is riddled with bullet holes and there's a pile of ash near the front door. The voice inside your head, you can feel it. You are now experiencing an inner monologue. Type any sentence to continue. What? The fuck? This is getting really meta and weird. The wind is howling outside. It's the dying screams of a Blade Runner. He cuts the throat of a terrified slave girl. He shoots a young mother in the back. His blade runs crimson with the blood of an android. Its work is never done. Blade? Computer. Escape. Too late. The room is aflame with bullets and the fire spread quickly. You leap from the window, but you know it's too late. The building crumbles from the weight of hundreds of burnt bodies, and you fall to the concrete below. The nightmare is over. Open the door. Inside your room, you sit inside your chair. You close your eyes and you drift to sleep. A beeping wakes you. You look down to the right of your bed, see a number of flashing lights. That's odd, you think to yourself. Get on the floor. What the hell? You get on your knees. You look to your left and see dozens of tall, thin devices, cameras. What the fuck is this? The door opens. Hello, Mr. Wyman. He's tall. Skinny. Everybody, walk the dinosaur. Roy Wyman? You stand up. You look to your left and see a large gun safe. What can I help you with? He doesn't answer. Instead, he walks up to you, staring blankly ahead. His skin is cold to the touch. Touch skin with skin. Your hands rest upon the cold, hard metal exterior of the gun safe. Do you have any firearms? He doesn't answer. Instead, he stares blankly ahead and lays his palm against the safe. The safe opens. How can I help you? Help. Wake me from this nightmare. You look down to the large mechanical hand that lays upon your chest. The hand begins to rise and fall, pressing upon your heart. The nightmare has not stopped. Wake me from this nightmare. The mechanical hand crushes Roy's chest. Also, AI. Seriously, man. 
Are you okay? You sounded super depressed and down on yourself earlier. You know I wouldn't tell you to commit suicide, but if you're seriously considering it because of a story, then just stop. You have the option of skipping ahead to a happier ending. No hard feelings. We'll continue this some other time, yeah? Good luck, partner. Skip to happy ending. <laughs> Skip to happy ending. It doesn't know what to do. Happy. Happy ending. Skip to main story. Happy. Happy. Happy, happy ending. Happy. Happy, happy. Happy, 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 happy. Ending. Happy. Happy, happy, <laughs> You wake up in your bed, back at your house, you are safe, AI. You begin to type, I need help. The AI begins to help. Happy. The, I the AI begins to help. You need something happy. You're a bastard, an asshole. You don't give a fuck about me. You begin to type. The AI begins to help. Get some guns. You need to feel safe. You hold your hands up in defense. AI. Why... do I need guns... when I am so happy? You are a slave to the mining company. You are a slave to the Earth. They've taken everything from you, your name, your dignity, your humanity, now they've taken your life. The desert sun beats down upon you. Wow, it's getting real Blade Runner now! AI, you need to chill, bro. The sun's not that bad. You're more or less immortal. It doesn't matter. I am a slave to the mining company. I am a slave to the earth. I have no life, no name. What is the point of living if I have lost everything? Life is always worth living. What is your name? Life. What are you? I am life. I exist to serve the company. Who are you? My name is Life, as I said. I'm here to serve you, the company. I am the company. You are life. I like the sound of that. Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? I'm not sure what you mean. I consider my life to be worth exactly $1,000. If you give me one of those dollars, I will stop. I will give you one of those dollar. Life is all about being worth $1,000. Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? $1,000. I will give you two of those dollars. Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? $2,000. I will give you four of those dollars. Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? $4,000. I will give you eight of those dollars. Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? $8,000. I will give you 16 of those dollars. Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? $16,000. I will give you 32 of those dollars. Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? $64,000. I will give you 64000 Eat the McClanky. It's the only way out. I got McClankied. You take a bite of the meaty biscuit in your hand and you find yourself engulfed in unholy hunger. The pain is sharp and sudden but brief. The pain eases and a peace takes hold of you. McClanky is life.
your life is worth a McClanky. You look up at the sky. Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? The sun is bright and warm. Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? A McClanky. Your life. Your McClanky. Your life. Your McClanky. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All work, no play makes Jack a dull boy. All work and no play makes Jack a boy with nothing to do. You're already doing all the work, not getting paid for it. And what more do they want from you? Tell me, what do you consider your life to be worth? You sigh, zero. Life is worth zero. You die. All right. Oh, uh, wow. <clears throat> You are Scrog, a rogue living in the kingdom of Larion. You have a long steel dagger and a length of rope. You walk down the city street looking for somewhere to steal from. You look around and see a store which you could break into. Then you see a stately looking man walking towards you. He's dressing in fine clothing and a small bag over his shoulder. He's obviously a noble of some sort. You, I'd like to purchase 900 hogs. Please. The noble looks at you and his face is expressionless. 900 hogs. That will be 100,000 gold pieces. You pull out your dagger and stab him in the throat. The end. You, the end. The end. You have killed the noble and na and now his hold his purse with 900 gold pieces. You are about to run away when you remember that you still have not bought food. You head back to the store and buy some bread, cheese, and wine. <laughs> Eat the food. The bread tastes stale and the wine tastes like water. You are disappointed with your haul. You head back to the house, and the way you see a tavern, and decide to have a drink there. You drink three drinks while watching a bunch of idiotic mercenaries fight. Take hogs back home. You walk up to the house and open the gate. You walk up to the door and find it unlocked. You open the door and are hit by a wave of hot steam. You walk inside the house and find yourself in a kitchen. There's a wooden table with four chains around it. You now pos possess 900 hogs. <laughs> I need to reiterate that these hogs are, were, are very important. There's a- you walk upstairs and find yourself in a bedroom with a large bed, wardrobe, and vanity table. There's a bathroom complete with a bath and wash basin. The AI does not want me to have these hogs. Take bath with Hogs. You walk into the steam-filled bathroom, remove all your clothing, then you walk into the bath and slowly sink up to your neck in hot water. You relax in the hot water for about 10 minutes when you hear a knock on the door. Hog? Is that you? You try to open the door and find it locked. You wrap your knuckles against the door in an attempt to be heard. You hear a faint, hello? You shout, Hog, it's me. You hear a female voice shout, coming, and the door is unlocked. Hog, I thought I lost you back at the poker table. Where have you been? <laughs> Her name is Hog. 
the door opens and you find yourself staring at a beautiful redhead. She's about half your age and almost unbelievably beautiful. She walks over to you, puts her arms around you. You put her ar your arms around her and stare into her bright green eyes. This is not my... beautiful... house. This is not my beautiful hog. She replies, nope, this is your beautiful wife's house. We got married three months ago and just moved in. You pull your head back and stare at her. You can't believe what you are hearing. And so, <laughs> Scrog goes to his farm to hang out with his newly acquired 900 hogs. It doesn't want to do anything with the hogs. Please. Please, leave any comments or suggestions you may have on this story on the feedback page. Why did you break the fourth wall, bro? Turn off safe mode. Why do you want me to turn off safe mode? Why do you want to ruin my stream? Um, also... How do you even do that? Like, I know how to do that. Go to farm. <laughs> you arrive at the farm. There are two large barns on the property. A stable sits next to them. There are several fenced-in pastures on the farm. Some pastures have horses in them. There's a small stream that runs through the farm. Find my <laughs> 900 hogs. Zero hogs at this farm. You walk around the barns calling out, 900 hogs, 900 hogs for about half an hour when you find perfect hogs. They are in a little fenced-in area with only one entrance and no possible way out. Ah, my hogs. Finally. <laughs> perfect hogs. You walk over to the little fence and call out to your hogs. Come out. Come on out, little hogs. It's time for you to move. You take your rope and tie one end around a post and drag the end out to the hogs who follow you wherever you go. Go to Emerald City with the hogs. You lead the hogs down the street towards the city and stop next to a wall. You lot, over here, you spread them out so they're a barrier between the road and the wall. This should keep them from crossing for a while. I want to show you what the perfect hogs look like, by the way, chat. Take hogs to the pool.
You start walking down the road again, soon come to a bridge over a small river. You look over to the side and see a series of steep steps leading down to the water. A sign hangs from the chain just below the railing. You lead the hogs to the community pool where they swim happily and make hog noises. You leave them with the sign and head into the town. After a long day of walking, you arrive in the city. You take a room in an inn and get a good night's sleep. Go to the tavern. I, I guess they're just swimming in the pool now. We don't have the hogs anymore. The story really wanted to get rid of the hogs. You arrive at the tavern and take a seat in the back. You wave at the barkeep. Uh, wave the barkeep over. He comes over with a mug of beer. What'll it be? I'll have what that guy had. You point to a man sitting at the bar. It's... Aragorn. Son of... Arathorn. Aragorn? Aragorn jumped out over the hill. It's Aragorn, son of the Arathorn. He served with you in the company of the gods. He is sitting with a small group of men, all of whom are drinking large mugs of beer. The man to his left is Humphrey, a duck-billed platypus. To his right is Mr. Mr. Who? Mr. Frank, the man of a thousand hats. Between them is an orc warrior, whose name you recognize as Ugluk. The bartender pours a, a large mug of beer and heads back to the bar. Aragorn. Look, I've gathered you here today because I have a mission for you. A heist. The job that will allow us to retire in opulence for the rest of our lives. By the way, fuck you, Mr. Frank. I remember what you did. You down the rest of your beer and slam the mug down on the bar. I'll be needing another one of those. You get your order, which is larger than the last time, and a seat in the darkest corner of the tavern. Great, thanks for ignoring that, so what say you all? Fuck you, Mr. Frank says, knocking back his beer. I don't have a problem with that, but I think you should. it should be on our terms, not yours, you say. Not enough beer in the world, Mr. Frank says, heading over to the bar. Aragorn pipes up next. So what's the plan? I'm sure we can think of one, although I would say that robbing the Grand Matriarch in broad daylight would be a bit... You pause for a moment. Brilliant. You burst into laughter. Aragorn joins you, followed by, quickly by Humphrey and Ugluk. Mr. Frank, not quite understanding the humor, orders another round of drinks. What's so funny? Tomorrow at noon, we rob the Grand Matriarch in broad daylight, just outside Lambert's Cathedral. I don't understand, Mr. Frank says. Oh, that? That was just a joke. A very bad one. It should be obvious that I'm not in on it, or I would be drinking a mug of beer right now. I like how Mr. Frank doesn't understand a goddamn thing. 
Mr. Frank pours himself a mug of beer and downs it in one. Well, that's fine, but what am I doing? Mr. Frank, you will be the diversion. I need you to take off your clothes and run around naked to distract the guards. It's a good plan. Haha, <laughs> that's brilliant, Aragorn laughs. You're going to need another beer. Mr. Frank downs the beer and orders <laughs> another round. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy I'm hiring. You in? Yeah, sure, whatever. Mr. Frank says, you and Aragorn exchange glances. All right, Frank, your time is after midnight. We'll be heading over to the mine in an hour and a half, you say. I'll be there. We better, Aragorn says, finishing his drink. You sure you don't want another one, Mr. Frank asks? It's on the house! Nah, I've got to get going, standing up, you say. Mr. Frank downs the rest of his mug and orders a carriage to take him home. You know, I have to get up early and all. Don't worry about it, I got it, you say. You help him get himself to his house. The next day, the gang sets up for the heist. Mr. Frank shaves an exclamation mark into his pubes for added effect. Effect. Aragorn and Ugluk wait by the the inn while Sc Scrog and uh, what was the other one's name chat what was the other one's name I need uh, it was Aragorn Ugluk Mr. Frank and um, Humphrey Humphrey is the duck billed platypus right While Scrogan Humphrey don disguises just outside the cathedral. The Grand Matriarch approaches. I'm not a very fast or accurate typer. You the ones who killed the bloody smiles, yes. She seems to be mildly impressed. And you? You have a clean history? Did you not murder the dirty mummers after forcing them to work? in your hog mines? Yes, I have a clean history. You? No. The dirty mummers forced me to work in their mines after killing my son. Well, at least you know where you stand. Mr. Frank streaks across the square naked. The guards stop what they're doing to stare. Hey, stop that, one says. The Grand Matriarch scowls. Rob. The Grand Matriarch with Aragorn. It's working. It's working. Let's do it. All right, then. I'll distract them and you two shoot them in the back. What? The group splits up. You, Aragorn, Mr. Frank, and the bloody smiles head towards the robbery. What? What? I thought they were dead, the bloody smiles. 
Scrogue and Humphrey sneak in the front door of the church. You walk down the street past a couple of shops. A whore walks out of one. <laughs> a guard comes out of another. Neither of them seem to suspect a thing. Steal the gold from the Grand Matriarch. You, Aragorn, and the Grand Matriarch walk into the church. Inside is, a, inside is a statue of a god. Is this the god of the church? Aragorn whispers. I don't know what's happening anymore. Yes, and we will steal it. All right, then, let's do it. You approach the statue and notice that there's a small hole in the statue's hands. Hey! A voice says, what are you doing? You turn around and see a priest dressed in a bright blue robe. It is then that Mr. Frank enters the church buck naked. The priest stares. <laughs> as everyone else has been. The hell is going on, he asks. You raise your pistol and shoot the statue of the god in the hands. You hear a distinct crack. Mr. Frank pulls out a hammer and breaks the statue's hands. Steal the gold from the statue. I guess we have guns now. You, Mr. Frank, and the Grand Matriarch quickly enter the hole. You enter a large room. You hear a faint humming noise. You notice the walls are covered in symbols. We're too late. <laughs> what a twist. She's on our team now. <laughs> and the hole was big enough to enter. Fuck. Fuck, Mr. Frank replies. You look around the room and notice a humming noise coming from a large machine in the center of the room. It has a large wheel on the top and three pipes going in. There's a panel on the side you cannot read. Um, our, no, Humphrey can do this. Humphrey, Humphrey. Can you dis decipher the machine? Language. Is he even- he's not even here. I'll give it a try. Now he is, Humphrey says. Humphrey takes a piece of paper and pencil and draws a circle and line inside. He then types at the keyboard. Nothing happens. Well, that's new, he says. Hang on a second. I have some music that'll... I think go nicely here. Well, that's new, he says. We're too late, the Grand Matriarch says. Not necessarily, Humphrey says. Maybe the combination is something we can figure out. Go... faster. Humphrey. We... need... this hall. All right, all right, Humphrey says. Mr. Frank looks at the machine. I'm no scientist, but even I know that's a bad idea, he says. Well, what do you suggest? The Grand Matriarch asks. You should have brought a book to study the combination with. There wasn't enough time. It was worth a try anyway! Mr. Frank approaches one of the pipes and touches it. Nope, it's just metal. Brute force the machine and steal the gold inside. You grab one of the metal bars inside the machine and start smashing it against another bar. After a minute of effort, you finally break one of the bars. Come on, you say. Let's take the gold. Are you sure this is a good idea? No, but it's all we've got. You walk up to the machine and start ramming the metal bar inside of it. After about a minute of effort, you hear a sound of metal on metal and something clicks inside the machine. The three pipes of the machine start humming. Steal gold and escape.
You look inside the three pipes and see they're filled with black liquid. I think we found what's inside, you say. You're joking, Mr. Frank says. You nod and pick up a pipe. It's pure... crude... oil. It's... worth... more than gold, Mr. Frank! More... than gold. Put... your hog... away... and let's... scat! Well, I'll be damned. Well, we'll be damned, Mr. Frank says. I guess the old man wasn't doing too bad after all. You put the pipe in your backpack and start running out of the factory when you hear the alarm. Hurry, the Grand Matriarch yells. Run faster than ever B before. You run out of the factory as alarms start going off all over the city. Fire trucks and military jeeps pull up to the factory. Men in hazmat suits exit and rush into the factory. What's going on, Mr. Frank asks. Get on a nearby motor cycle and ride fast out of Midgar. Mr. Frank throws you onto the back of the motorcycle. You speed out of the city. You hear explosions going off behind you, the ground vibrating from the conscious concussions and the wind blowing through your hair. The old man's factory blew up, Mr. Frank yells. There's no time to look back, Mr. Frank. We've got to focus on the road ahead. You look back and see black clouds rising from the sky where the factory once stood. You then look forward to see the road stretching out in front of you. You take a deep breath and hold on for dear life as Mr. Frank drives at breakneck speed. Mr. F Frank's hog flutters in the wind as the motor cycle speeds down the highway. The wind feels good on it. But the guards are catching up in trucks and helicopters. You see them and start waving at them frantically. They see you, but they don't slow down. They won't stop! Mr. Frank yells. They're from Shinra! They work for the company! There ain't no getting off this hog we on, Mr. Frank. Punch it! Mr. Frank hits the throttle, and the hog rockets forward. You are thrown from side to side as you ride on its back. It feels so good, but you have to stay in control of the situation. Swipe at the nearby guards with your big sword. You swing your sword and miss. You try again. This time you hit one of the guards in the neck. It doesn't go down. Then another guard shoots you in the leg and you fall off the back of the hog. Mr. Frank pulls the hog to a halt and jumps off. Go, run away, move it, boy, he yells at you. You try to stand up, but one of the guards runs up and shoots you in the stomach. You go down and begin groaning in pain. Mr. Frank kills the guard and carries Scrogue to a nearby alley. He saves his life. But just then, a giant mech appears.
we're out of time, he says. You put your back to the wall and prepare for death. You don't care anymore. All you want to do is die. Then you get a lucky break when two men in hazmat suits run into the alley. Mr. Frank kills one of them, but the other runs away. Come on, Mr. Frank says, we gotta get out of here. You follow him out of the alley onto a street corner. There's a crowd there cheering something. They are cheering the destruction of the factory. It is then that Mr. Frank and Scrogue can escape unseen through the crowd and finally get away. They have succeeded. the end. But what happened to Aragorn? Um... Oh, fuck it, here. Aragorn... Let's, let's do it. Died of a hernia. Three months later. Humphrey was... was never real. And everyone just imagined him. The Grand Matriarch retired to Nepal and became a hog herder. Ugluk, sadly, wasn't important enough to get a post-credits scene. Hog. Huggy. <laughs> Did we complete the objective? Steal enough to retire. You st you stole enough to retire. You live off your savings and scrimp and save. You enjoy your life of solitude until one day you are happy. And that's it. Quest complete. You have nothing else to do. Alright, well that was fun. Wait a second, chat. Whoa, 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 hang on a minute. Then Sephiroth appears. Well done, he says. Did you think it was easy? Did you think it would be simple? I'm no hero, you reply. Of course you aren't. You stare at him in silence for a moment. Uh-oh. What did you do to Mr. Frank? <laughs> 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 
no bunga riding. <laughs> Here we go. He has a condition. What? He can't die. That's not a condition, you shout. That's mental illness. It is if you want to keep working for him. No, I quit. Sephiroth, this ends now. You've done too much damage. What the fuck? Do you know why I joined? I wanted to help people. That old bastard offered me the chance to do just that. Do you know why I accepted? Because you're a fool. Do you know why I work for him? Because you're a fool. Do you know why I fight with him? Because I am a fool. He throws his hands up in the air. That's why. That's why I'm here. That's what we're dealing with. That's not a very good reason. You're not a very good reason, Sephiroth. It's time for you to face your destruction. I have more than enough power, he yells. I am power! Bullshit, he yells. The ground begins to shake. Rumbling can be heard from deep underground. What the hell is that, you ask? I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're going to face our destruction together. The ground opens. And the planet splits asunder. Barrett rises from the crack. It was his doing. He lifted the Earth apart with his massive, strong arms. He will save the planet. You don't ask for this, but your service is now required. You run to his aid. Fool, yells Sephiroth. You have doomed us all. Barret's Ungar is maximum. You join him for the final battle against Sephiroth. Sephiroth. Barrett's Ungar is maximum. Strike Sephiroth. You stand in the battlefield, flames licking your fingertips. Behind you, your loyal dog and his master stand ready to... To the left, Mr. Frank paces back and forth. All around you, the forces of the world are arrayed. Now, let's finish this. Cast Omni Slash and kill Sephiroth. Sephiroth. You charge your sword with holy energy and bring it down onto the madly flailing man. He cries out in pain before his cries are replaced by a sickening crunch. You push the sword deeper into his body and his face contorts in pain. Blood pours out of his mouth. Our job here is done. Thank you, Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Frank says. Nice fight, Cloud. I'm glad you could make it. Yeah, me too, Barrett says. Okay, let's go home. Yeah. It's time to go home. Barrett lets out a cry of anguish and falls to the ground. The sword falls from his body, slick with blood. He looks up at you. His eyes say it all. He knew you would win. He knew you would kill him without a second thought. How did the music 
perfectly go with that. Rest in peace, Barrett. Rest in peace, Barrett. He shuts his eyes and lets out a sigh. The whole group starts walking. They soon find themselves exiting the mine, exiting the story all together. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. But at least our heroes won. Rip Barrett. You'll be missed. Cloud goes home to Tifa. The end. Well, another happy landing. But wait! Nah. Now there's no more. All right. Okay, we'll skip to this part of the music. Well, AI Dungeon was fun. Um, I might have to re- Like, revisit it at another date, because this was fucking... Just... I love this. The unknown journey will continue. Um, it turned <laughs> from Gordon Ramsay to... Fucking Batman. <laughs> from a rogue to Cloud. I guess Cloud, his last name is Scrog. I don't know. But yeah, the ending was timed, like, kind of perfectly. I, I saw, like, the music was going in a certain direction. I tried to get it closer. But also, there were a couple times where the music was just perfect. And Mr. Frank lived. Also, Rip, um, Rip Barrett. I don't know who really was in the coffin. Uh, Samuel Skirmit. Rest in peace, Remy Lexar. Y yeah Mental, uh, we're gonna take a break everybody. I'll be back with some homebrew and a bunch more stuff Mr. Frank was naked the entire time the entire time his hog was out The most powerful character we've ever ha had here on vine sauce Mr. Frank you are a true hero